Okay, so here's the second problem on conditional probability. So here's the situation. We have an urn that contains six red balls and four green balls. So imagine that you have here your urn, and there are six red balls and four are green. Well, what is the experiment here? We draw two balls without replacement and we denote Ri to be the ith ball drawn as red. So R1 means that the first ball that we've drawn is red. R2 would mean the second ball that we've drawn was red. And we stop at 2 because we only draw two balls. GI is the same thing. If you write G1, that means the first ball that you've drawn is green. G2 means the second ball is green. So we pick ball 1, then ball 2. So let's start. We're looking at A first. So we're asking P of R1. So what is the probability of selecting a red ball on the first pick? Well, there are 10 balls in total. And out of those 10 balls, 6 are red. So it's 6 chances out of 10. And you can cancel a factor of 2 and you're left with 3 on 5. Or if you prefer, 0 0.6. And that's P of R1. Let's look at B now. B, we're seeing P of R2 given R1. And now we have a conditional probability. This is asking, given that the first ball that we've selected was red, what is the probability of the second ball being red? Let's find this in two different ways. Let's first start with the definition of conditional probability. Well, this is P of R2 intersects R1 over P of R1. Well, the intersection means and. So if you say R1 and R2, it means the first ball that you've selected was red and the second ball was also red. Let's find this probability. Well, the odds of the first ball being red, 6 out of a total number of 10, but 6 out of 10, that's 3 over 5. And, right, that's the probability of selecting the first ball being red and times the probability of selecting the second ball being red. But think of it. You've already picked the first ball to be red. So there's one missing. So you're left with five red balls and four green for your second pick. And now the odds of picking a red ball are five out of a total number of nine. So that's your numerator. The probability of the first ball being red, three out of five, and times the second ball being red, 5 out of 9. And we divide by P of R1, which we know is 3 on 5. Well, if you divide by 3 on 5, you multiply by the inverse. So you multiply by 5 on 3. So we can cancel the 5 with the 5, the 3 with the 3, and we're left with, quite simply, 5 on 9. So we stuck here with the definition of the conditional probability, and it wasn't too hard, but there was a bit of work. Let's see if we use our intuition, if we can actually do much simpler. And the answer, as it turns out, in this case, is yes. So think of the question that we're asking here. Given that we know that the first selected ball was red, what is the probability of the second being red? So we're right back here. So if we know that the first ball that was picked was red, well, now our sample space is five red balls, four green balls. So we're in this situation. 
So given R1, given that we are now in this situation, what is the probability of picking a red ball? Well, there are five red balls out of a total number of nine balls. And it's just five over nine. So you see, it's kind of interesting. If you stick with the definition of the conditional probability, it's a bit of work. But if you fall back on your intuition, it's actually much simpler. And as you can see, in both cases, we have the same answer. C. What are we asking in C? C is asking for the probability of R2. So the probability of the second ball being selected being red. But now we have a problem. What happened at the first pick? Was the ball red or was the ball green? We don't know. So the idea is, well, let's condition on those two options. Let's use the law of total probability. Because the only two possibilities for the first pick is the ball was either red or the ball was either green. So let's condition first on the option of the first ball being red. So on R1 times P of R1. Or the first ball could have been green. So the probability of R2 given G1 times P of G1. And you see we've conditioned on the only two options. Either the first ball was red or the first ball was green. And that is, if you remember, the law of total probability. So let's see. Well, P of R2 given R1, we previously found this to be 5 out of 9. P of R1, we have found to be 3 out of 5. Plus, well, let's look at this part first. P of G1. So the first pick, what is the probability of getting a green ball? Well, let's look up. Initially, we have six red, four green, and we're asking what's the probability of getting a green ball. So we have four possibilities out of a total number of 10. So it's four out of 10. Whoops, four out of 10. Four P of G1. The only question is, is the only question left is, sorry, given that the first ball that was selected was green, what is the probability of the second being red? Let's look up. We are told now that the first ball we picked was green. So that means that we are left with six red as before. But the first ball that we picked was green, so we're left now with only three green balls. So what was the question? We were asking, given that the first ball that was selected was green, so now we are in th this situation, our sample space is six red and three green, because we took away one green ball. Given this sample space, what is the probability of selecting a red ball? Well, we have six options out of the total number of six plus three, nine balls. And well, let's simplify. So what are we left with? We can cancel the 5 on 5. And then 3 on 9 is a 1 on 3. Plus, well here we can cancel with the 6 and the 9, a factor of 3. That leaves us with a 2 and a 3 on the bottom. And we can also cancel from the 10 and the 2, a factor of 2, which gives us a 5. So we're left with 5 on top over 3 times 5, 15. Put everything here over 15, multiply by 5 on 5, and you have 5 over 15 plus 4 over 15, which gives us 9 out of 15. We can cancel a factor of 3, and we're left with 3 on 5. So that's part C. So there's one last question. Are the events R1 and R2 independent? Well, 
We already know the answer to that if we look at part A and B. So let's just rewrite the two results. P of R1 was 3 out of 5. So this is D. And in B we have P of R2 given R1. And that was equal to 5 on 9. So, the question was, are the events R1 and R2 independent? Well, let's see. If you ask, what's the probability of R1? That the first ball selected is red, 3 on 5. If you ask, what's the probability, given that the first ball that was selected was red, that the second ball is red, the probability is 5 on 9. Oops. I was supposed to look at P of R2. My bad. But we already know that from part C, P of R2 is 3 on 5. Kind of funny that it's the same as P of R1, but that's purely coincidental. So P of R2 is 3 on 5. Sorry about that. So you say, okay, the probability without any prior knowledge of the second ball being red is 3 on 5. But if we know that the first ball was red, then the probability of the second ball being red changes. It's no longer 3 on 5, it's 5 on 9. So they're not the same. So R1 and R2 are again dependent or are not independent. And this completes our second example.